something that I develop uh, for myself, just for improve my own performance. And I thought it could be of interest to some other guys, so that's why I'm presenting this. It may not help everybody, it is just that it helps me, and hopefully someone will find it helpful as well. Um, so the motivation is that um, in order to, to help the Faro community, I am all the time uh, using the, the new tools that people develop that are not ready in the image. I, um, I, I'm using always the last versions, which are not really uh, stable. So I am all the time uh, filing in uh, fixes or reporting. Um, so what happens in my case is that what, what Steph says is that I am a bleeding edge ninja fighter, which I always fighting with the latest versions. So that's how Stefan Ducas like to, to say it. But basically, it means that I am downloading images all the time, and an image doesn't last me more than one or two days. And so that's the first of the motivations. The second one is that I have, after a couple of years uh, with small dog and I have my own preferences, my own customizations that are different from the default uh, settings. As well as, uh, for example, tools that are not present in the default distributions and I usually install. And finally, because I usually work with different projects at the same time, and I always like to build images for a specific project that help me with that project. So that's what the second motivation. Uh, so I spend time building my own images. Imagine what Nico showed was very trivial, were very few customization, but if you still you have to do that by hand every time you, you want a new image, you will spend your whole day doing that. So if we mix the two previously um, motivation that I am learning hundreds of images every day and I spend a lot of time building my own images, do something really that is not working at all. So that's what, what I did and what I will show you. And even more, I am lazy. I don't like to lose time with this, and my memory is bad. So I never remembered where is the configuration, what I need to load, which groups, where is it, what do I need to execute to enable or disable this. So I wanted to, to make that uh, automatic. So something's not working for me. That's why I want to make clear that it's not for everybody. And I, so, I think that the tools are there. Uh, the, there are tools out there that I can use for my needs without changing one line of code. So why not to use them? So the tool I am talking about, it's Metacello. Metacello uh, it was developed mostly by Dale, which is here, and some other contributors like Doru and a lot of people here. Basically, it's a package management system for Monticello. So with Metacello, you can, for example, uh, define the dependencies between packages or or uh, it lets you hook to, implement, uh, to run code after or before packages and let you define uh, versions, uh, stable and releases and things like that. It's basically uh, like um, if you're uh, in Visual Ages, uh, it could be MB, or if you are in uh, Java, it could be Maven, but it's just a tool to, to manage projects. So basically, for, if you don't know MetaTero tool, you will probably not get too much from my talk. But in a very, very short definition, Metacello is, uh, the, the user view of Metacello, it's, uh, sorry, the development point of view of Metacello, it's a class where you define all the information of your project. Which are the dependencies, which are the versions, what do I need to execute before and after, which are the groups that I define, et cetera, et cetera. It's like the POM XML if you're used to Maven or, or some other example. These are some of the information that you usually put in a configuration, like the, the list of projects used by a project or by a package, the, the dependencies, the list of versions, etc., etc. If you want and you're interested in this and you, you, you don't know MetaCello or you know but you would like to know more, there is a new chapter that uh, I, did, I wrote with Steph, but mostly Steph is continuing. I didn't review it in some time. They help us a lot also, so you can read it. So what is my proposal? Is throw away MetaCello? No. 
not at all. People complain sometimes in the mining list about Metacello, but I think the, the, the tool is great. And so w what I propose is quite the opposite. It use Metacello even more. So my proposal, sorry, is to <coughs> give one extra usage to Metacello, which it, it was probably not the intention which it, it was developed. But anyways, I can do it with it, and it helps me. So that's what I will show you. So before going to the demo, I will give you a sh very short introduction to the, to the example. In my case, <coughs> I develop or I contribute with a couple of projects, for example, Fuel, Divex Talk, Marea, and sometimes I develop a little with IBM. And for those projects, I always need two operations. One is to load the code. So I am in, in, a, in a random file image, and I just want to load the code. I want to load the code of fuel, or I want to load the code of Maria, or whatever. And the second operation is that I want to build images for those projects. That is, take a regular file image, install all the tools that I al always use, set up all my preferences, and let the image ready so that I can start to use it and feel con comfortable with that image. Okay. And then there are a lot of several external tools that, for example, uh, Glamorous or Key Mapping or Tiling Windows Manager, that those are the tools that I usually add for the, for when I build images. OK? So that's the example that I will show you now. Remember that what I will show, the code that I will show, is not general. It's not a framework. You won't be able to reuse the code. Maybe you can reuse some parts to so that you can get an idea how I, I did certain things. But the idea is that you should get an idea, the process. You, sh you should get the idea of how I use Metacello, OK? So I will go with the demo. So. The, the tool is divided in two parts. First, you have your own configuration class. So, for example, if you have Seaside, the web framework, or Moose, or whatever, you usually have a config um, configuration file of Metacello for that project. Okay? In my case, I, do, I code a configuration for me. It's not a project, it's not a software. I am not a software. I am Mariano. So, I create a configuration creation of Mariano, where I will put all the information of my project. Okay? So notice that if you are used to, to Metacello, I don't create versions, I, I don't create several baselines, I just have I just have one baseline and I put the following information. First, I list the projects that I develop. Like I told you in the example, Fuel, uh, Maria, Divex Talk, etc. For these projects, notice that the, the version that I always download is the bleeding edge. What does it mean? When I put this, Metachilo will always load all the latest versions of all packages of that software. So it means that when I will load Fuel, it will load all the last version. And that's what I do, because I develop Fuel. So I want to, let, to get the latest versions, so that then I can change something, commit, and not have problems. I don't want an unstable release. That, that, that's what the final user wants but not the developer. developer. OK, and in this case, I, I already know, I, I say also which packages to need. One of the problems is that the packages that you need as a developer are not the, package, are not the same package that the, the user may need. So all, otherwise, I will need to remember, oh, what package do I need to load from fuel? Ah, uh, yes, this, this, this. So this way, I group everything. I don't need to remember anything. All I need is in this information. I will load the fuel, I will not download this group, which this group contains all the packages that are needed from the development point of view, and I will load the latest version. I know that the configuration is in this repository because, again, I never remember if the configuration, if it's in its own repository or if it's in Metacello repository, so it's impossible to remember how to load a software. This way, I don't need to remember. It's already here. And the same I do with Marea, Divex Talk, CodeBeam and, and, and TextLint that I, I always use. And then after is the list of tools that I 
installed when I build my own images. These are the tools that are not present by default in the far image, but that I use. This is, for example, this is a, a special theme that I will explain you why I use special themes for each image. I have a tiling window manager. Nico already showed you. It's a, a window manager to improve your performance. I'm using Glamorous because I like, for example, the, insp the inspector it has. And I also like the playground. But Doru told me it's not red finished. And there is, uh, I always like key mapping, as Nico said, that let me customize the shortcuts that I use. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So, as you see, I define two lists of, of things: the tools that I install and my own tools. The first one was always with bleeding edge. That means that I always take the latest versions and I put specific groups because I will develop on that. The other tools, if you see, they always get the default most of the time. So I, do, I am a user of, of that package. I will just load, but with what I am supposed to load as a user. And I don't use bleeding edge. I, uh, I, I let the default version, which is the latest stable one. OK? Because that's what I need. If I want to use a new, a cool inspector, I don't want to get the latest very version, because I don't care. I want the latest stable, stable one. It's not like the process I develop. So once I have defined this, and this is the entry point. This is what I use. In the class side, I have a special shortcuts methods, OK? Like load cockbm, load divex talk, load fuel, load marea, and load text lint. So now, whenever I am, I took any image, and all I need to code is something like this, which, of course, I have it handily. So I don't even have to type it. I always have it handily. And I, I just get this is a Gopher script to get this code. This code is under a package called Mariano Builder, which is in the repository Mariano PhD. So we just grab this, and I say configuration of Mariano. Uh, sorry, here should be load fuel. OK? Load fuel. And that's all. That's all I need to remember to load a package. Load fuel, Maria. I just need to do that. So when, when any image I take, it takes me one second to take this and just change here what they want to do, to load this project or, or the other one. OK? So uh, with that, at least I gain the part of loading code, which I don't need to remember anything. Now, and this is the more interesting one, the second part. The second part is about building the images. Because maybe I, I am already in another image and I just want to load, which is fine. But then I want to create custom images for a project. That's what I call the builder. So as you can see, in in the building category, I have similarly, I have build cog image, build divex talk image, build fuel image, etc. And that's what I, I will show you what it does. It basically delegates to the builder. For example, cog BM image builder, new build image, divex talk is the same, divex, divex talk image builder, new build image, and of course, all the rest are the same. So, what, what this builder? Does. OK, I will show you that. The builder, it's a plain class, regular. It, notice that it is just a subclass from object. There is nothing special. And the entry point was build image. So what I do here? The, the first step is that I will download the packages that make that images. So what, what are all the packages that, that, I, need, uh, that I need? So. This, oops, sorry. This method, I will show you basically what it does, is that each subclass, because I, I will have one subclass of the, of the builder, I want one subclass for project that I want to build images. OK? So for example, each subclass will answer, will implement the message image group, image group name to load. So for example, this class will answer GOG VM image, DivX talk will answer DivX image, etc. Those are the metachello groups for those images. So if now we come back and we go to the configuration of, uh, sorry, and we spec again the baseline, we will see that at the end I create special groups 
for the images. So here I am saying fuel images, fuel image, it's a group which contains the base image plus this special theme plus fuel. Marea image is base image plus Marea and so on. And the base image, it's a group which contains tailing window manager, simple logger, code stats, glamorous, and key mapping. So that's the software that I add to a, a normal image. And then I build groups for my custom images. In this case, for example, fuel, it takes another uh, theme. And the, the rest of the package do not add extra packages, but they could. OK? So now, if we come back to the builder, we said that the first, uh, sorry, I will disconnect. So the first part, it was to load that code, which, which is fine. It is the first step. Notice that I using a special load, load package, but I will explain you this after. The second step is to just set the general preferences. That is, I have preferences that I change, to, I set to the for image that are general for all images. So, for example, I uh, put uh, fast uh, dragging, I put the, the annotation code, I, uh, I put the debugger always that it shows uh, completely open and not the pre-debugger window. I, um, I set the auto test that I will show you. I register the Glamorous Explorer as the default, etc., etc. So these are settings that I, this is what Nicolas showed you in the previous session from the settings browser. This is how to do it by code. So this way I set the preferences for all images. Then there are cost, um, custom preferences which each subclass can change or set a specific preferences. So for example, CogBM, okay, it does nothing. But for example, DBX Talk, it sets a specific logo. Uh, Nicholas, by the way, this is how to do it by code. I don't know. Take a look. So you can set a specific logo. You can uh, put a, a, a background. You can change the, the file name for the, for the follow the back dot log, et cetera. Uh, fuel image does more or less the same. It uh, installs the, a logo. It changes the background. It changes the theme uh, and change a couple of things. So these are custom preferences that I can change for each image I build. Then I have the cleaning. So after installing a lot of software, there are a lot of Mon Monticello history and cache and things like that. So I, I have a couple of scripts that I close all the windows. So th this is just some cleanups that I do to the, to the image so that they are a little bit clean at the end. I set my uh, author, so now my image won't ask me again which is my name. Um, and this, this is very interesting that I, I wanted to show you this. Last actions is a way that I can hook and to, impl to do things mostly at the end. One is that I put my repository at the end. This is because I am really lazy. And you know, when you install something with Monticello, it always, if you install a software and then you install a lot of things, your project end up at, on the top and, and all the packages are, all the repositories are at the end. So it's difficult, you need to scroll all the time to, to show your project. So I always put it at the end and I, I know where it is. I, I will show you in the, when it is ready. And this, it's because I am also lazy and um, when you install software with Metacello, if you are downloading a package which is in a, in a quick source, uh, which has a setting, the global uh, read, so there's not go global write, you will, for example, fuel is that case, I, I will be able to lower the code, but then I won't be able to commit, I will need to edit the repository, set my username, and set my password. So, and I, I am developing those projects. So this way, with this little script, I just, um, go over the repository and I set for all the repositories, I set my, my own username and my, and my own password. And last thing I wanted to show you, uh, um, then of, of course I save the image. Uh, each image can subclass, can specify how the image will be called. So for example, no, sorry, this is 
how the image will be called. So, for example, Maria answered Maria, fuel answer fuel, cog answered cog BM generator because it's the image the image I used to generate the cog sources, and then similar similarity, similarly they can answer in which directory to save that image. So the image will be finally saved in that, with that name and in the place that I am telling it. So now I always know where to go and fetch uh, the image that I am building, which of course they are specific folders that, that, that I have. And finally, b b before showing you the, the result of executing this, is something that I also changed in, um, in, in Faro, which is, um, It's because, you know, maybe this uh, it's a little bit advanced, but if you see where you have an image, for example, in this case, you always have a package cache. That's the package cache is a directory where all the .mcz uh, files from Monticello are stored. So then the next time, if you need such Monticello, Monticello package, you will first look, the, look there. And if it is, then it doesn't go to a squeak source or whenever you have the file. But what happens? This cache, it's per directory. So it's just for this image. So since I am building images all the time, the package cache is always empty. So what happens is that at the end, I am all the time loading the MMC data files because they are not found in the cache, because it is for each image. So what I do from my build script is that I change and I set a share, the, um, share package cache for all the images. So there's one place which is, um, okay, it is in users Mariano Faro local repo. So all images in my system now use that repository. So now, if I really want to build an image, it's 90% 90 90 that all packages will be there, because it is shared for all the images. And this led me mostly build images offline. Yet, yet no, two days ago, I was in the train, and was able to build an image being offline. Because if you try to load fuel, for example, I, will, I want to just get the latest versions. Of course, it may happen that I not don't know in the very last version because I'm not connected to internet, but I will uh, still be able to build a, an image with the very latest version that I have in my machine. And since I'm developing with them, it will be likely to be, if not the last, quite near. Of course, this is not always, it not happens because if, my, if what I'm loading has explicit reference to a specific version, which I don't have in the package cache, it will fail, of course. But with this, I really increase the, ability, the possibility to successfully build an image offline and to decrease the overhead in, in, in the network part of the build process. So that's all that I'm doing so far with the customizations and so the way to do it, it's just as, as I show you. So here I just change a build fuel image, and this will fire up the build process. Okay, so all I need to remember is, is that. It's only that. Uh, it takes time to build the image, so uh, I won't show you. I will do, ¿Cómo era Nico lo de la torta? Lo de la que cocina? So I will bring the, 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 the bake, when, no, the bake, no. The, um, the pie, when it's already finished, like the cookers, uh, because it, it, it takes a little time to load all the software and configure. So I will show you quickly. I have, for example, uh, in fuel images, I have all the images that I have been generating in the last days. So for example, if I pick up uh, the last one, this is my fuel image. As you see, I use a specific background, and I put the logo, and this is not just to be cool. It's because I work with a lot of projects at the same time, and I need to do focus in a project. So for me, it's very important that I can know to which project I am working at that moment. So this way, I know what I am with this ugly background. It means that I'm with fuel. And I put a specific theme, which is blue, very blue, so I, I can recognize quickly that I'm working with fuel, and, and I should focus on that. Because otherwise, if you're working with 10 projects at the same time, it gets really complicated. and. So and if you see this image, I can quickly show you that, for example, if we go to the Monticello browser, and we see 
the, share, the package cache, it is the shared one that I told you. If I edit a repository, I will see you will see my username. And, eh, eh, no, I won't show you my real password. <laughs> so that's my password. And uh, fuel it at the end. So I always know I, ha I know I have to go there to search fuel, and I don't need to scroll searching for fuel. And for example, if uh, I open a work page and I do a narrow, the debugger will open. Oops. Okay, I don't know. Okay, something it's not. Uh, well, something is not. Okay, this should open the debugger. Um, what else? Uh, I have. Uh, my name is already set. Uh, I have here the Titling Windows Manager that that I always install. I have the the automatic uh, test runner. I have uh, all all the things that I show you that uh, that I do by code. They are present uh, in the image. And if I go also, for example, with to DBX Talk uh, images and I pick the last one, uh, it should be the same. Maybe here it works, the debugger. Maybe it doesn't. Yeah, here it works. I don't know why. But you see, for example, the debugger, it shows automatically. That was one of my preferences. Uh, whatever of the preferences or the settings that I did, uh, they will be present uh, in this image. And then, for example, with, Coke, with the Coke VM, I do something different. So if you see, the Coke VM, which is, this is very cool, uh, the Coke VM, I place it in a specific path. If you see Coke VM Maker um, image directory, so I put this image directly in the hit repository where the, the rest of the platform source of the VM is. So now I can, I can just go there and build the image. So if I, OK, yes, I'm finished. OK. So <coughs> to continue. Quickly, I am ready done. Uh, so what I think is that at the end, or in the near future, we will all end up having a continuous integration server like Jenkins that will be building, will be building the images for us. It will be a Jenkins or, or, or whatever, but I think that will happen at the end. But since I got access to the Deliram, I am already in the future, so I have a local Jenkins running. Uh, okay, it's, this is running localhost, and I'm automatically building my images. And if you see, okay, th maybe this will require uh, more explanation, but if you see the build script that I'm using for fuel, it is uh, this script which we can, I can find it in here. It's Jenkins Builder Scripts uh, Fuel. So if you see this, what should I guess? The same that I was doing by hand. So now you can trigger automatically the builds with a, a continuous server in, integration server if you desire. So to conclude, what I would like to, to, to say is that first, Metacello was built to the idea in mind of managing software. So we start to have a conversion of seaside, conversion of DBX toy, conversion of fuel, conversion of moose, blah, blah, blah. Now we have like 200 configurations available. But what I propose is to extend that. So we can use the configuration and use Metacello for individuals. So I have my own configuration. You could have your own. Juanito, David, Pepito, each can have its own Metacello builder. And you have companies, so wh why not? Uh, I have a company, I have this amount of projects and this product, so I group them all together. I, we have these tools, and so we, you, you have configuration for, for each company. Then you can also apply that to university. Why not to have images for, uh, you have, um, I don't know, if in the Paradigmas de Programación, in, in Universidad Tecnológica Nacional, or in the UBA. So you, you can build configuration for, 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 the, for the images for the student. So you, you set the preferences, what Nico, what Nico was doing by hand to his student. 
they can do it. You, you, you give them a configuration and they can do it. And of course, for research groups as well. So it doesn't matter to what, but what I mean is to extend the user to something different than just managing software. And the second conclusion is to merge or to, to use MetaChello to trigger the builds of custom images. And that's what I show you with, with, the, with the builder. So that's all. Questions? Okay.